Okay, everyone, let's continue on to section five, secure internal connectivity in ACI. ACI tenant networking. Okay, everyone, so let's begin section five. And I am very, very thrilled to start section five. And the reason why is now we're gonna see the big picture. We're gonna see why ACI fits in the modern data center. We not only leverage a fabric to run virtual networks on top of it, meaning that we have the ACI fabric, this actually represents our data center fabric. And not only we leverage a single fabric to run multiple tenant networks, we also leverage the fabric for external connectivity purposes. Like for example, we have here a common scenario where we have our main data center, right? In our main data center, we host our compute infrastructure. So we have our compute environment hosted on the main data center. In this case, all of our virtual machines are running in a set of UCS servers. If you're not familiar with what UCS is, it's Cisco's compute platform. So basically it's modular blade chassis type of infrastructure in which you accommodate a certain amount of blades and each blade performs the physical hypervisor function. So let's go and discuss how all this that you see right here fits together. And don't be scared because you see a lot of stuff going on here. Don't worry, it's actually very simple to understand. First of all, remember going back. So if you go back in your mind and start remembering our first, I will say the section two and section three, we talked about domains. And one of the domains that we talked about was the layer three out or the external routed domain, okay? And what it does, it allows me to connect my data center, in this case, my ACI fabric, to an external network. And let's say in this case, we have a router here, which is our CE, if we have an MPLS type of connectivity, or we have a layer two handoff from an ISP that allows us to do this layer two extension or Metro E, in this case, we're using eVPN, but I'm just giving you a scenario in which we can have a layer two circuit between our main data center to sites one and site two, right? So don't worry, by the way, we're not going to touch eVPN. This is not meant to discuss eVPN. This is just for you to understand the different connectivity types that we have on this particular scenario where we have maybe a, an MPLS circuit. We might have an SD-WAN connection. We might have a layer two circuit. There's tons of options out there. So in this case, we're just gonna focus ourselves into having like a point to point bridge between my data center and my remote sites. So we have point to point one and point to point two. So we got two sites, point to point, point to point, okay? So what are we looking from a networking standpoint in ACI? And when I mean networking, we're not talking about the underlay, we're talking about the tenant or the overlay. So on the tenant side, we have, remember on section four, we have tenant web server farm. Let's continue using web server farm because we're familiar with it. We have a VRF, the virtual routing forwarder. This holds all my learn routes, my locally adjacent networks inside my tenant web SRB farm. So every tenant should have at least one VRF in which you're going to associate all your bridge domains to it. All your bridge domains are going to be associated to the VRF for your tenant. But not only that, let me go ahead and clean this real quick. I want to show you that not only you connect the bridge domain to the VRF, you also connect the layer three outs or layer three external routed domains onto the same VRF. So let's say for example, we have the bridge domain web SRV app BD, right? There is a subnet configure of 10 to 150.00 slash 24. And we also have another bridge domain web SRV DB BD, which has the subnet of 10.170.0.0/24, right? So, how do we allow this to talk to, say, for example, site one, 
So I want this computer right here to be able to access my app SRV1. How do you do that? You will be creating an external routed L3 out or external routed domain, associating that external routed domain to the VRF for tenant web SRV farm. So in the tenant section, you're going to have networks. And then below networks, you will see the external. Okay, so under network, external routed domains, and that is where you configure the external routing domain portion that will allow to communicate this particular device and this particular core switch, or in this case, router, to my tenant. So the tenant is going to exchange routing information between the bridge domain and my adjacent core switch in this particular side or this particular side. So let's recap. We have a VRF, we have a bridge domain, right? And we have external networks. In this case, layer three out. You can also configure layer two out, but in section five, we are first gonna configure a layer three out and we were going to allow it to communicate to the web SRB farm tenant, right? So what we want to do is we want to show that ACI performs or ACI allows you to connect to an external network and apply the same principle as if you were allowing traffic between endpoint groups, right? So if you remember between endpoint groups, we have a contract in the contract, we have a subject in the subject, we have the filters and the filters. We do have the parameters that we're going to allow between that provider and that consumer, right? So in this case, we did a demonstration by allowing ICMP. So as simple as pain, we created a filter with ICMP added onto the subject. And then the subject was on the contract. So in this case, everything that you see right here, again, I want you to pay close attention to it. Don't look at this and think this is very complex. Once you understand ACI, and you become very, very familiar and very comfortable working with it, it's all gonna make much sense. It's just another network that you're going to attach a contract. And once you attach the contract, it's gonna start exchanging routing. So it's gonna be this 9K here is gonna learn about the networks here and the networks here. And it's very cool the way that it does, okay? So we're gonna discuss all that. Also, I took the opportunity to color code Anything that is for the bridge endpoint group app, SRVS. So everything that is yellow, it's going to be yellow here. And we have the two VMs, by the way, both of them are running in my virtual environment. And for the DB EPG, we also have two VMs. Our angle allow communication from site one and site two to both environments. However, we know we're going to make it very interesting. Site one is only able to hit server one and server one. Site two is only able to hit server two and server two for both app and database. So this is the whole purpose. We want to make this as interesting as possible and show you how flexible the ACI fabric works on your behalf. So there you can do stuff that you never thought that you can do in a traditional network. Now in ACI, you definitely can. This is basically called micro segmentation or UEPG. Don't worry, we're also going to discuss that. And basically what it does, it allows me to isolate different endpoints, even though that they're on the same bridge domain, this machine, I can make it completely isolated from this one. And even though that they're on the same network, they're not going to be able to talk to each other. So that's very cool. That's definitely very cool and very powerful. You can isolate why site one if it the only server designated to talk to is anything that is labeled server one why i need to allow it to talk to server two i don't in aci i have the power to not to limit to single ips so i can limit to single endpoints of what can talk to what i can basically go as deep as into a single ip and isolate it from everything else so don't worry again to recap networking introduction vrfs they contain all the bridge domain network information and all it's a route table for a tenant that's what it is it's a route table for a tenant and then we have external networks which are also attached to the vrf in which then the 
bridge domains are going to know about those networks and be able to talk to them. But everything happens as long as we attach a contract to those endpoint groups as well as those external domains. Okay. So in our next video, we're going to go deep into configuring and you're going to see it's very cool. So let's go and start configuring.